all the guarantees of the, of the contract that we saw in those files. And so every Windows device, and it's worth saying, not every Windows desktop device, every Windows desktop, every Windows mobile, like a tablet, every Windows phone, every IoT device, every Xbox, they all will have this universally across. Not only will they have Windows universally, they'll have UAP universally. Perfect. All right, let's talk about just laying out your solution, Andy. Um, the good news is, it's what you already know. It is. It's what you, what you know. So, no surprises here. If, if you've been developing for Windows 8.1, this will all look pretty familiar to you. Uh, okay, this is a template that we've developed, which has got a lot of folders in it. But essentially, yes, there is a package.apex manifest. Ah. Yeah. So no, no change there. I no mean, change there. no doubt it's got a few new tags. Oh, yeah. There's, there's a few changes to it compared to 8.1. Yeah, but you've got a package.apex manifest. Is there a head? Well, yes, there is a single head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've now creating, so by head, what we mean there is um, a, I don't know, what do you call it, a family-specific yep. binary. Well, we've only got one binary, so we're just compiling once, and that one binary will run across all of our different, uh, different families of devices. Well, if you do want multiple heads, and you want to go back to the shared project style, and I say back to, that was just a few months ago, yeah. but you don't want to go back to that, uh, that's fully yeah, supported as absolutely. well, it's whatever you absolutely. want to, but, you know, the... The dream, right, the nirvana here is that we could have a single project, single binary. That's where we are. That's what we've got. But it's flexible, too. You can do whatever yeah. you need to. Remember the pound if we could trick the compiler or we would be talking to the compiler and saying not to include certain blocks of code. Do we still have those pound if tags? Well, yeah. So if you create a Windows UAP uh, application, uh, in the compiler conditional symbols, you get the Windows underscore UAP will be defined. So this only becomes of interest when you're sharing code at a, at a code level between different projects, uh, which was with Windows 8.1, this is how we did it. You had a shared project, and you kind of just shared all that code between your Windows head and your Windows phone head. Yeah, that, the, the good news is for that. developers, developers didn't like that pound if, including me, right? I mean, it doesn't take long for it to be quite confusing and, and hard to read the code that you've got. The good news is you don't need to use pound if ever again. And so there's a whole way of sniffing to see whether or not certain things are... are uh, capabilities are on the device that you have, so you can totally look past that. Because if you think about it, the pound if is telling the compiler not to include a block of code. So if you have this pound if, and you have this, and not that, suddenly you have to have multiple binaries in order for it to work. But how can you solve it without pound if? We have API information for that. So the good news is, if you need pound if, supported. But if you don't like it, which most of us do not, and you want to have a single binary for every device, we have a solution for you. Yeah. Perfect. All right, what about laying out your interface. Remember the, the old guidelines, and I say the old guidelines because it was a handful of months ago and that's so yesterday. And what's changed with them? Well, there's good news there too, Andy. Yeah, so uh, design, essentially the design of your XAML-based UI uh, apps is just the same as it ever was. It's uh, you know, what you already know. So uh, clean layout. Sure, we design, we're changing the layout of sort of the icons. They're kind of, we're getting this new design language so the appearance will change. But essentially, the way that you, uh, you design an app to be used and give a great user experience to your users stays just the same. So focus on making sure that it's intuitive and easy to use and a pleasure to use. Uh, focus on you know, good white space and not cluttering up the UI, uh, giving good quality experience. Um, be scalable, be accessible, so make sure that your app supports uh, um, uh, uh, people with uh, the visual imped impairments and or uh, it just, you know, all the stuff you already know. Right, from a principle level, it's exactly the same. Yeah. I mean, there's some, some subtleties to make it unique to Windows 10, so it has its own brand, but at, its, at the level, it hasn't changed really at all, no. really at all. All right, so let me just walk through and build an application for us. I will... Um, I'll use Blend because I like Blend and it's our, our tool for uh, XAML developers. So this is Blend uh, 2015. It'll No doubt it will change by the time uh, this video is released because it changes every day. And so I'll just open up a, just like I would in Visual Studio, I'll start up a brand new project here. This is going to be a, a, a univer Windows 10 Universal application. And so I have these nice uh, helpers, the quick tasks that you have inside Visual Studio. I have those as well inside um, blend as, as well, so it's just great. I can open up and use the designer just like in Visual Studio again, but this is sort of where the just like Visual Studio starts to slow down because there's a lot of capabilities inside Blend that are geared really to um, 
make its XAML developer more productive. One of the things that we didn't have in earlier versions of Blend was autocomplete inside uh, XAML. Of course, we have that now, full IntelliSense and everything that you would ever, snippets and on and on. All these pieces basically enabled because we're using the Visual Studio shell now instead of a, a proprietary shell just for Blend. So now Blend 2015 is using the Visual Studio um, uh, shell, which gives us all of its capabilities. So I have the, I can look at all the different ways of seeing my application in the designer, so I can see it either as mobile, desktop, and then all the different sizes and all the different resolutions. And so let's create some sample data. I'll just call it sample data just for now. And so data management, resource management, these are all capabilities that are unique to Blend. So we've seen this before in older versions of Blend, and so those are all brought forward, so Blend users should be very comfortable. And so I can grab some of this, uh, def you know, it's just design time data, really. But as soon as I drag it in, it'll actually be runtime data as well, if I set it to be. And so I can just run this. Let's start with running it not on uh, Windows, but let's start with the emulator. And so I'll run the Windows Phone emulator here. It'll launch it, deploy my application. Of course, it's just like Visual Studio. All the debugging features that I'm used to are all here as well. And so there's that data that it created for me. This is the same sample data that's been in Blend really from the beginning. These chairs have really been around. And so you see here, I'm using the um, very familiar pivot control, and then inside it is a, a list box as well. And so what's great is, that, remember, it's one binary for everything, so now I can go up and switch it from being the, the phone emulator to local machine, so it's running here on Windows. And when I run it here on Windows, nothing changes. Single binary, all the same controls now are shared across all of them. You can see it's a windowed application, which is pretty cool. And you can also see that I'm using, of course, at list view, I'd probably want to switch something out so it handles it slightly differently. But the, you can see that it's a list view in a pivot. We didn't have pivot control in Windows before. All, all of those have been now converged into a single toolbox across all the different devices. So a lot of power there as well. It's really, really great. I, I, uh, um, as far as a blend uh, experience, the the developer, e even now, you can change it. You know, a lot of developers get uncomfortable when it's a black environment like this, so they want to change it to be whatever. All the themes of Visual Studio come across, as well as my ability to log in so I can interact with not just visuals, not just uh, source control, but as well as my... Um, as well as my settings roam and a lot of the candy that I get from Visual Studio right here in Blend. Anyway, that's all there was to it. I, I mean, I just said file yeah. new project and I just pick where I want to run. That one binary just runs in whichever, if I had an Xbox sitting here, we could run it there as well. Yeah, that's pretty nice how Blend has uh, kind of grown up, if you like. It's a, a load of people have been wa asking for things like uh, IntelliSense and, and the proper code editing support in Blend. So, so it like not only has our Windows Dev platform converged across our different devices, but our Dev tools have converged as well. So really, Blend and Visual Studio are the same. Give you the same tooling, but they're focused on slightly different. They know, are. They're really for the tasks. The, the XAML kind of task yeah. that you have. Uh, universal apps run on every device. I think that's the important takeaway. That's, key message, that's, yeah. that's not because it's a shared kernel. It's not even because there's a Windows Core across all the devices. It's because of this universal app contract, this guarantee, the platform that goes all the way across every device. And the UAP is, is all the way across, all the way down to IoT. So I write this application. Obviously, I'm going to have some considerations yep. for a device that's about that small and doesn't have a monitor, so I'm going to need to think about what, what yep. needs to happen there. But the reality is, one binary runs across all of them. I now have, it's the dream. We yep. finally hit where we wanted to go. Yeah, so I think it's a, that's an important message, isn't it? That we're not saying, oh, you know, lowest common denominator, you have to run, you have to come up with this dumb UI that will kind of magically work across. No, we've got great tools to enable to create UIs that shine on different devices, but all yeah. your logic, all the binary, it's all the same. It's all built on the same and it's, platform. It, now companies have the agility now to react to business conditions that change. They're like, man, I wish we could run this on the phone. Well, let's make sure the UI looks good on the phone because it does run on the phone. Man, I really wish this could run on Xbox. Well, let's make sure the UI looks good on Xbox because it does run on Xbox. And you can kind of go from there to there, and it's not a, okay, let's build the Xbox We're app. We're really lowering the barriers for moving your app onto different families of devices substantially. So it's, it's really good. Really cool. This is Windows 10 Preview. And so this was our Hello World, right, just creating a simple app and running it on two platforms, something you could do today 
very easily, running it on UAP, on the Universal App Platform. And we talked about the solution structure. We talked about the, the UI, those things that really haven't changed fundamentally. Download Visual Studio 2015 Preview. Try this for yourself. Run Hello World on phone, on desktop, and just know you could even run it on Xbox too. Then watch another module. This is a developer's guide for Windows 10 Preview. Welcome. We're going to talk about what if you have an app that you've already written, one for Windows 8, one for Windows 8.1, and now you're ready to retarget to Windows 10. What's that process look like? Andy's going to walk us through the whole thing, and let's get started. Yep. Okay, so this is the 10 preview. So the process that we'll get when this actually uh, goes to, uh, to full RTM release will likely be a bit different. So this is to get you started where you are now if you're a Windows Insider and you're working with this tech preview SDK. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to talk about here, first of all, look at kind of where you're starting from. So it, you know, if you've got an 8.0 app or an 8.1 app or you, uh, the different flavors of phone app you've got, it's a kind of complicated story, but there's, there's uh, you know, different paths that you're going to go on in order to get to the, the beauty that is uh, Windows 10 UAP. And then we'll go through an actual example. So I'm going to take a, we're going to take a Windows Phone 8.1 app and we're going to migrate it to 10. And uh, so you'll see how that works and uh, what the steps are that you need to do. Perfect. Let's talk about the migration paths to Windows 10 then. There, there's a lot of different options and I'd like for you to kind of walk us through what, what they are because I think we have a story for everybody. We do, yeah. So the first one I want to consider, so I'm going to take, take four different kind of starting points and then uh, just at a very high level talk about wh what you can expect for the migration. So if you've got a Windows 8.0 or an 8.1 store app, so this is a, like a XAML based app written using the WinRT API set, if you want to move that onto Windows 10 UAP, what kind of effort are we looking at? Well, actually, the code is uh, the Windows 10 UAP is a superset of the Windows 8.1 yeah. uh, RT API set. So, no, you shouldn't have many great problems there. So, that's going to be pretty good. And again, great compatibility between your XAML UI uh, and moving that across to, uh, to 10. So, getting it across there is going to be pretty simple. You're then going to want to do some UI work to make sure you've got a, a great uh, adaptive UI that's going to work well on small screen devices like the phone. But you might already have that if you've developed your app to work in like a snapped view in, in small window on your, you know, you've probably got all the design work. You've already done all this. So, yeah. this one, really not much too much trouble. Beautiful. Now, uh, we, you already gave us the warning. The tooling may not be there yet, yeah. but of course, we're going to be able to do that in a simple way, and you, you'll walk us through it here, but it, it might be slightly different. Sure, sure. There's going to be changes along the road. But... So the next one I want to look at is if you're a Windows Phone 8.1 store apps. Now, Windows Phone 8.1 is kind of a complicated story, So, because uh, you, you can actually develop apps using our older Silverlight app development technology or using WinRT. So this is like the phone half of an 8.1 universal app, is what okay. are we talking about here. So they're written in WinRT. Um, now, actually, pretty similar story to the, the Windows 8.0, 8.1 situation here. Uh, your underlying code is going to be pretty compatible, very compatible. Because you know, of it's a superset. It's the same, it's a super, yeah. UAP is a superset of WinRT 8.1. So yeah, not too many problems there. So your code's good. Um, your UX design, well, again, that will go over. It's all the same XAML. It's all going to go over to 10 UAP pretty easily. Uh, again, though, here, you will have designed your UI for a phone form factor. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have this running on a desktop tablet, bigger screens, you've got a bit of UI work there. In actual fact, you could just leave it on phone on 10 UAP. You know, you don't have to have it running right across all the families. But of course, presumably, that's what you're going to want to do, because that's the kind of the big value add of our Windows 10 UAP platform is getting your apps onto to multiple different devices. All right, so it starts with, what if I've got Windows 8 as a Windows app, then in Windows 8 as a phone app, but what if I've built a universal app? Yeah, so that's the next one. So this is, um, you know, we're going from Windows 8.1 universal to Windows 10 Universal. Mm -hmm. So you'd think it kind of would be just a straight move across. There's actually a little bit more of a complication here, if you like. So again, your code underneath is WinRT 8.1, so no great problems there. So um, 
And you've already done your design work. If you've done a Windows 8.1 universal app, you've got your phone UI and you'll have built your tablet PC UI. So you've got your design work is all done on there. So, but then we need to move all that over into this converged binary into an adaptive UI that adapts. So you're now creating a single binary package for UAP. I see. So in Windows 8, I was actually creating two binaries, yeah. one targeting phone, one targeting Windows. That's now cool. we're creating one binary. Yeah. That's why we're building this yeah. adaptivity. So that's right. So, you know, we don't know what the tool is going to be uh, at the end, but there's probably going to be a little bit of moving stuff around. But it's not like you're having to rewrite everything. Absolutely not. You, you can really use all of those assets you've developed. It's kind of just reorganizing things into this, mer into this combined uh, universal app solution. Still quite a few apps in the phone store that are Silverlight apps. I think it's worth yeah. talking to those developers. Right. So Windows Phone Silverlight is the technology we've used for developing phone apps from the beginning. Um, and it's still absolutely supported for Windows Phone 8.1 today as an alternative to the WinRT stack. Um, so, but uh, the problem here is that the Silverlight APIs, they're kind of older .NET based rather than WinRT based. So uh, Windows Phone 8.1 Silverlight apps, certainly the older ones, 7.580, you, you're going to look at a rewrite really of your logic. Mm. Um, and again, the UX, it's all XAML. So at least you know the technology hasn't really changed. It's not like you're reskilling your 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 whole technology base. But hopefully, a developer has used good design patterns and been able to abstract some of their logic away into view models and yeah. models and things that are outside, so that there isn't a rewrite. Right? They'll be able to use those probably portable class libraries that yeah. they have.